Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. Welcome to another video of Smarter Jannah. Smarter Jannah. <laughs> All right guys, some of you may recognize me from the previous video that I'd done against Tom Tommy Robinson after the Westminster attacks. I thought he got the message, but apparently he didn't. So now at the Oscars, they quoted an ayah of the Quran. Tommy Robinson found his opportunity to bash Islam again. So I was thinking, if he doesn't rest attacking Islam, then, you know, I shouldn't rest defending Islam. What do you say? Let's have a look at Tommy together. Come, join me. Dear Hollywood's liberal elite, stop patting each other on the back for your progressive agenda. Stop slandering Donald Trump at every single opportunity. Whoa, but that's freedom of speech, Tommy. Surely you're not against freedom of speech, are you? What you're actually doing is you're enhancing Takia and Kitman. For those of you who have no idea what these two Arabic terms mean. I've got a feeling even you don't know what they mean, mate. It means deception and deception by omission. There you go, I, I was correct. First of all, these are Shia terms. They're a minority sect. The majority, who are called Sunni Muslims, don't accept what you just described as Takiyah. Now these guys are a minority group. Surely you don't think we're all the same, Tommy? Hmm? Now let's see what takia is to the Sunnis, the linguistic meaning of takia. Takia is the act of protecting oneself from danger. What's wrong with that? The technical meaning of takia. This is where you probably got confused. To protect oneself by displaying an action or speech contrary to one's beliefs. Okay, bear with me. Takia in normal circumstances is impermissible according to the majority of the scholars, ulama. It is only permissible in times of dire need. Imam al-Qurtubi says, Takiyah is not permissible except if one fears death or being cut up into pieces or great harm. I don't think anyone's got a problem with that. Now your definition of Takiyah, which is concealing truth or whatever, fair enough mate, yeah? That sounds dodgy. But again, that's not the Sunni definition, you're going with the Shia definition. I can't speak for Shias. My challenge to you is for you to find your definition of Takiyah in one reputable Sunni book. That's it mate, just in one. Because surely we must be learning it from somewhere. Yeah, so go to our books and let me know mate. Let's look at the website where he got the terms from. Ah. <laughs> An anti-Islamic site. Excellent. It's like asking a vegan about the joys of chicken. Alright, what about the Takia website? Oh, uh, it was the first link on Google and it's a Wikipedia source. Alright, moving on. Here Hollywood's liberal elite. Stop ramming Islamic scripture down our throats. Whoa, 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 whoa. They're not ramming it down your throat, yeah? The documentary White Helmets won an award and the rescue workers in that documentary were inspired by this verse. In fact, the whole documentary was. So, at the acceptance speech, they just said the verse. But apparently that's not good enough for you, Tommy, is it? When you choose the quotes you do, you're deliberately misrepresenting the Quran and you're lying to the people on the world stage as well. Let me explain. Hollywood has become the Western mouthpiece for the Muslim Brotherhood. How is it a mouthpiece for the Muslim Brotherhood? In fact, it's filled with anti-Islamic films. This is one of the good things they've said in quite a while, mate. Yeah? And you got a problem with that as well. <laughs> they carried out a cringeworthy false flag operation to highlight the beauty and peaceful nature of the Quran. Have a listen yourself. The organisation is guided by a verse from the Quran to save one life is to save all of humanity. The problem is the liberal elite continue to use this verse. They use it to fool and deceive the public. When you understand the context of this verse, it's frustrating, in fact it's infuriating hearing people deliberately misuse it. Oh really? It's really infuriating, yeah? Alright, let's see mate. I'm, I'm interested now, Tommy. This verse is even now being quoted at the Oscars. No one ever quotes the whole thing. Surah 5 verse 2. Oh, no one quotes the whole thing. But Tommy, I've got a feeling even you're not going to quote the whole thing. If you kill one man, you kill all of humanity. 
Now I know what you're thinking. It's a beautiful, peaceful, loving verse. How could I be such a racist big? Yeah, Tommy, how can you? Muslims don't want us to take the Quran out of context. We continually hear that. Yeah, because it's wrong. Why would you take it out of context? In fact, Christians say the same thing about the Bible and the Jews the same thing about the Torah. In fact, everybody does. But apparently it's okay for them to do it time and time again. Stop telling people they're misinterpreting or misunderstanding Arabic. Uh, no, because if someone is Tommy, then I'm going to tell them that they're misinterpreting. Do you see? If someone's not, then I won't say it Tommy, yeah? So not wanting to be an Islamophobe, I'm going to put this verse in context for you. So Tommy accepts the term Islamophobe. Yeah, I know, I know a lot of these guys don't, but there you go. The verse that follows was completely omitted from the Oscars and if included, it changes everything. Continue reading after 532. If you kill one man, you kill all of humanity. Unless he caused mischief or corruption in the land, then you execute him. You cut his hands and feet off. You drive him from his homeland. All right, all right. Now, there are several points to be noted here. First of all, this is a punishment, yeah? For who? For the regular Joes? No, not for regular Joes. These are for people that number one, have committed blasphemy. Number two, engage in daylight robbery. Number three, committing murder. And number four, stealing, amongst other things. In other words, this is a punishment against terrorism. In fact, most scholars use this verse to show how Islam is against terrorism. So it's ironic that Tommy's flipped it. Now, another point that needs to be mentioned is the use of the word or. The use of the word or between each punishment shows that it depends on the severity of the issue and the circumstance in which it took place. In other religions, it's straight death or chopping the bit off. Here's a verse from the Bible. Now, again, I'm sure there's a context to this as well. And ironically, Tommy misses the next verse, which says that the punishment is not for those who repent. But again, he uh, missed that out. Now, for those of you that think that this punishment is unheard of, yeah, as I'm talking, I'll also put uh, something from the Old Testament as well. I know some Christians say, you know, we don't accept that or whatever, but I mean, it's there. Now, again, I'm sure there's a context to this as well. But let's look within British law, yeah, the English Criminal Code. As late as the 18th century, the punishment for felony, treason and professing Catholicism was, and I quote, you would be drawn on a sledge to the place of execution. There, he would be hung by the neck from a scaffold, being cut down and disemboweled while still alive. His head was cut from his body and his corpse divided into four quarters. Arabic term Kitman, deception by omission. Sahih Bukhari is the foremost authority of the sayings and deeds of Muhammad in the Muslim world. Yeah, it's not Bukhari, it's Bukhari. You know from the epiglottis? The Prophet said war is deceit. What's wrong with that? All right, let's look at the guy who the West and the East accept in terms of being a military strategist. Yep, you've guessed it, Sun Tzu, who's written The Art of War. Let's see what he says. All warfare is based on deception. Maybe I'm just a, a dodgy Muslim and I'm misquoting him. Let's see another one. Let your plans be dark and impenetrable as night. And when you move, fall like a thunderbolt. Warfare is the way of deception. Although you are capable, display incapability to them. He who makes peace between the people by inventing good information or saying good things is not a liar. Are you getting this yet? Are you understanding it? Are you understanding it, Tommy? So you're saying that two people who aren't talking, for you to invent something good, just so they can patch up and be friends again, is something wrong? Take this quote. There is never an excuse to hit a woman. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? What great man said that? What peaceful man said might have said that? Hitler, mate. Hitler said that. But I don't know why you're calling him peaceful. It's a quote from Hitler. It's a quote from his book, Mein Kampf. Do you see how easy it is to misrepresent these quotes? Here's a person that's done a lot of negative stuff, mate. 
He said something positive and you're honestly saying that we should ignore that. Take the good, leave the bad. Not everybody's good through and through and not everybody's bad through and through. And I'm quite concerned that you're reading uh, Hitler's books uh, instead of uh, the Quran properly cover to cover. So considering Mo asked for deception, considering Muhammad himself... It's Muhammad's, yeah. I know you're finding it very difficult to say but he is the most chosen name uh, on our planet said it was an integral part of the struggle. Where on earth did you get that from? Where's the source mate? Not the HP source, the source of the quote, yeah? People who were giving us these quotes and using them out of context. If you read the next verse, the punishment for corruption or mischief in the land is execution, cutting off hands and feet and driven from your land. Mischief don't sound too bad. It's a loose term, isn't it? So Ibn Kathir Tafsir. Tafsir. What's a tasfir mate? It's tafsir mate. Yeah, you're doing a video that's reaching thousands of people. The least you can do is try to get the name right, yeah? It's pretty clear on what it constitutes mischief. If you don't worship Allah or you don't accept the dominance of Islam, then you are guilty of mischief. Now Tommy's been really crafty here. Yeah, he's, he's trying to do a sly one. He's moved from Surah 5 verse 33 all the way to Surah 2 verse 11 for the explanation. That's wrong Tommy, can't be doing that. And he's linking the punishment to disbelief. Nah, 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 nah. In fact, he's even chopped the top of the bit off. So I'll put that back in and let's see if we can make some sense of this. Okay, right. So he's missed out the bit where it says that it's referring to the hypocrites and not the disbelievers. Now who's doing takia mate? Hmm. Okay, let's read the verses of Surah 2 verse 11 using the same translation as him. And when it is said to them, do not cause corruption on the earth, they say, we are but reformers. Who's they? I hear you ask. Well, they here is referring to the hypocrites. Long story short, this verse is exposing the hypocrites who concealed enmity against Islam and professed artificially that they were practicing Muslims. So the mischief here is referring to disbelief when they're pretending to believe. If these Hollywood types expanded their quote even just a couple of lines, they quickly realize they're calling for their own execution. I don't know why Tommy is getting all excited for mate. Because we've already established Tommy that the punishment is for those who have committed acts of terrorism. Your explanation of the verse Tommy was very crafty because you went to the explanation of another verse and you misled the people by not telling them that Tommy. Does it still seem peaceful to you? Does Islam still sound like the bastion of peace? Yeah, <laughs> actually it does. So I'll say it again, dear Hollywood liberal elites, you should all win an Oscar for your outstanding performance the other night. Oh that's nice Tommy. In fact, what I'm going to do Tommy, uh, I'm going to show you what the Oscar was given for. It was a documentary called White Helmets on Netflix. This is where voluntary rescue workers, anytime a bomb drops, these rescue workers put their lives on the line and they go and they help the people. They don't get paid. And this verse that they quoted was their greatest inspiration. Now Tommy, I want to show you a bit of the trailer, yeah? I'm sure you'll like it. Have a look. Wow, that gave me goosebumps. 
Well, there you have it, mate. That's probably the most worthwhile Oscar we've seen in a while. And shame on the people that are trying to use this to taint Islam. In fact, it's a shame that rather than helping, we are using what these people are doing, which is constantly risking their lives to help these people, just to further our hate and divide humanity further.